We will now talk about Venus in our solar system. Some people considered Venus to be Earth's evil twin. It's roughly the same size as the Earth, but uh, very much different surface conditions. So let's go ahead and uh, learn a little bit about Venus. So we're at the second planet away from the Sun now in the terrestrial group of planets. And the image that's shown here is a radar image. Uh, you can tell that kind of uh, characteristic color that uh, color coded on the radar image. Radar doesn't have any inherent color, but um, we're in the second uh, position away from the sun in the planetary system, and being close to the sun is important in the life history of Venus. Uh, another one here with more of the cloud uh, nature of, of Venus being shown. Here the radar image again. So if you compare the sizes here, you can just barely make out that Venus is slightly smaller than the Earth. Venus is about 95% uh, the diameter of the Earth and has about 82% of the mass of the Earth. So it's similar to, uh, to the Earth in those two respects. Also, the uh, planet Venus has a rocky crust like the Earth does. Um, not an extremely different density. So we have uh, an iron nickel core like the Earth does. Um, so those similar, those physical characteristics are similar. Venus does have a much different spin rate than the Earth. Venus spins very slowly and Venus spins in the opposite direction on its axis compared to the Earth. So much different for the spin rate. It's not tidally locked to the Sun, um, but it is, does have a very slow uh, rotation. In terms of its orbit around the Sun, here, in this video is being recorded in 2014, Earth uh, at this position in its orbit, Venus is not favorable to be seen in the sky. It's going to be too near the Sun in the sky. Uh, but on the, uh, you know, before this date and after this date, um, it would be the times to see what phase of Venus. What phase? If I move around just a little bit more here, you can see we're still not favorable here all the way through October. But what phase would be seen for Venus from the Earth when Venus uh, perhaps was over here, a little bit uh, further back in its orbit, a little bit further ahead? And you should be saying gibbous and gibbous. So that was important as Galileo observed the phases of Venus. The only way for Venus to be in the gibbous phase is to be more distant than the Sun. The Ptolemy model had Venus in between the Sun and the Earth and never would uh, achieve the gibbous phase. So uh, we'll come to that a little bit later. In 2015, now the Earth has moved, so pick up your reference point down here. You're standing on the Earth and looking at the Sun and Venus is to the left of the Sun. Will Venus be seen in the morning sky or the evening sky? If you can think of the Sun at sunset, imagine in your mind the Sun at sunset. Venus is to the left of the Sun. Venus will be seen at sunset, not the morning. Uh, in the morning, the Sun will rise first. Think of the Sun on the horizon. Venus to the left of the Sun here in April 2015 and Venus uh, will come up during daylight. And here May 1st and finally May 15th and here is going to be a nice evening star. Venus sometimes called the evening star. In April and May look for Venus uh, as an object in the evening sky. It will be about two hands away from the Sun. If you extend your fingers on your hand, extend your arm um, Venus would be about two hands away from the Sun, should be fairly bright. So the pictures that uh, Galileo drew for the phases of Venus saw it went through the crescent phase to the quarter phase and further on to the gibbous phase for the planet Venus. But very important in distinguishing between the sun-centered uh, heliocentric model of the solar system and the geocentric Earth-centered model uh, Galileo's observations of the phases of Venus really showed that uh, the heliocentric model was correct. Venus occasionally goes across the disk of the Sun. In 2012, this is time lapse, or not time lapse, but multiple uh, photographs being uh, uh, merged together. But Venus goes across the disk of the Sun, and timings of when this occurs. Uh, were important in, in giving a value for the astronomical unit in the past. Uh, now it's just more of a 
an interest uh, to uh, to observe this. And one blown up photograph, again, real photograph here, uh, Venus passing in front of the disk of the sun as viewed from Earth. So why doesn't Venus pass through the sun every year as it uh, goes through uh, its uh, motions in its orbit? Oh, Venus and the Earth, their orbits are not perfectly aligned with each other. There's a little tilt to the plane of the orbit of Venus compared to the Earth. So sometimes Venus is above the Sun, sometimes Venus is below the Sun from our point of view. It doesn't go through the disk of the Sun every year. Photography of Venus from the Earth is uh, disappointing. Uh, we see clouds. The planet is totally cloud covered. We never see the surface of Venus from uh, uh, from the Earth, um, and we can go, we can map the surface through radar, but we never see the surface from Earth, Hubble telescope, what have you. Satellite in orbit around Venus, uh, uh, visual light uh, does not penetrate the clouds of Venus enough to see the surface. This atmosphere is very thick, it's been measured. The atmosphere of Venus is about 92 times the thickness of the Earth if we use surface pressure as a gauge of thickness. Venus atmosphere is very thick. It's almost all carbon dioxide, like 96 percent carbon dioxide, a little bit of nitrogen. Um, there is some sulfuric acid mixed in in the in the clouds and the landers that did land there, there's very little wind at the surface. The atmosphere is very thick and there's almost zero wind speed uh, at the surface. There are high speed winds in the upper atmosphere energized by sunlight coming into the uh, to the atmosphere. Um, so measurements of the atmosphere, very little water vapor in the atmosphere. That's a difference from the Earth's atmosphere also. Uh, very little water vapor. Um, as I say, there have been some landers on the surface, but they don't last very long. Uh, the electronics in there are damaged by the high pressure and especially by the high temperature. Uh, the temperature at the surface of Venus is can be over 800 degrees Fahrenheit and a uh, very hostile environment so we the electronics are not able to uh, to withstand that um, so if we use radar so we don't have to go to Venus to do some mapping of the surface features um, the high uh, areas are these brighter areas on the radar image and the darker areas show the lower areas on, uh, on Venus. The uh, mapping here does show volcanoes and does show craters. Uh, as astronomers do crater counts across Venus and the sizes of the craters, it does appear that most of the surface of Venus is uh, has been refreshed about 750 million years ago. Uh, the uh, surface recovered by lava and there are over 1,600 volcanoes, and one of the references that I read, uh, 1,600 volcanoes have been mapped out on the surface of Venus. Um, we'll get to, a, to an image of one of those, or reconstruct an image. But looking at this surface, uh, you know, 800 degrees Fahrenheit, what would you expect for liquid water on the surface of Venus? The planet's surface is at 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, you know that's way above boiling of 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So astronomers don't expect to find any water. There's no evidence of liquid water on the surface of Venus. Um, well, why is that? Well, let's think about Venus in its early stages. Suppose that there was a time when the temperature was around 100 degrees Fahrenheit and we have a little bit extra carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That carbon dioxide would block outgoing infrared light and cause the surface to warm up above the boiling point of water. Uh, and as that happens, as the temperature goes up, it turns out that any rocks in the past that had accumulations of carbon dioxide, as the temperature goes up, those rocks will release carbon dioxide into the air. Just a natural process, as the temperature goes up, carbon dioxide can escape from the rocks that it was trapped in. And this leads to a runaway greenhouse effect. As the temperature goes up, more carbon dioxide comes out of the rock. That causes the temperature to go up. More carbon dioxide comes out of the rock. That causes the temperature to go up. More carbon dioxide comes out of the rock. And now Venus has this equilibrium temperature of over 800 degrees Fahrenheit. 
due to the amount of carbon dioxide in its atmosphere trapping the infrared light. Um, so this would be cause a, called a positive feedback loop. The release of carbon dioxide increases the temperature, the temperature causes increase in carbon dioxide, so forth and so on. A positive feedback loop. Um, if you've ever been in an uh, auditorium where the PA system squealed, that's also a positive feedback loop where the sound comes back to the microphone, gets reamplified, goes out of the speakers, comes back to the microphone, gets reamplified, and uh, generally not a desirable uh, situation. Something else about the atmosphere of Venus that is uh, interesting, as astronomers measure the isotopes of hydrogen in, uh, in the atmosphere, and it's detectable in the way that the light is emitted, there's a slight difference between uh, the molecules that, of water that contain regular hydrogen and molecules of hydrogen uh, molecules of water that contain hydrogen with an extra neutron an isotope and what is found is that there is more as a percentage for the hydrogen that contains the extra extra neutron compared to on the earth and the thinking is that the water vapor in the atmosphere of Venus as it is uh, higher in the atmosphere that water vapor uh, receives ultraviolet light and as a consequence the ultraviolet light breaks apart the hydrogen from the oxygen in the water molecule and the which uh, molecule which atom will escape most easily from Venus is it the regular hydrogen with just one proton in the nucleus or is it the deuterium the isotope that has one proton and one neutron which is most likely to escape from Venus and from your knowledge of planetary atmospheres and retaining an atmosphere, you know that the lightest molecules have the greatest speed. They are the most likely to uh, achieve escape velocity and, and leave. And that's, that's happened on, on Venus. Uh, Venus does not have an ionosphere, a region of uh, ozone to absorb ultraviolet light and protect the atmosphere. On Venus, the ultraviolet light is more damaging and uh, gets deeper into the atmosphere and has apparently uh, broken apart water molecules and then the regular hydrogen has uh, left the planet in a greater speed, greater rate than the deuterium. Um, so back here. There have been landers on, uh, on Venus, the uh, uh, Soviet Union, um, Venera uh, missions. So here are direct photographs of the surface of Venus showing rocks the dry surface and again these landers only lasted a couple of hours before the uh, uh, electronics gave out due to the uh, very high temperature and the uh, high pressure. Another view here, dry rocks scattered around the surface. So the radar imaging has been very successful in mapping out the surface of Venus as I say. And impact craters have been uh, observed Again, the impact craters, the floor of the crater is below the general terrain level. And we have a rim and debris scattered out here. Uh, the debris does not go as far on Venus as it does on the moon. Again, more gravity and the debris uh, can't travel as far before it uh, is uh, pulled back to the surface of uh, Venus. But we do have images of impact craters all around Venus. More details here with uh, a particular impact crater um, and a reconstruction of a volcano again from the radar data and again the volcanoes are features where lava comes up makes a mountain it's above the average terrain level and then there can be a crater at the top as the lava uh, cools and the uh, surf the top of the, the dome of the volcano sinks back down so we can distinguish between uh, impact craters and volcanoes by the uh, level of the floor of the crater. For impact craters the floor is going to be below the average terrain level. For craters on the top of volcanoes the floor is going to be above the average terrain level and we get a buildup of material. It's interesting on the volcanoes of Venus there, there is uh, great speculation and some confidence that some volcanoes on Venus are active today. Um, the radar images in some locations have noticed uh, uh, changes in the slopes of the volcanoes, have, have noticed an increase in temperature on the slopes of volcanoes. 
and some of the spacecraft orbiting Venus have noted increase in cloud temperature for short times in certain uh, uh, parts of the planet. That would be interpreted as a volcano erupting and warming up uh, the clouds um, above that volcano. It's also been noted that occasionally the amount of sulfur in the atmosphere of Venus will change and that's presumably from uh, gases coming out of the volcano and increasing the sulfur content uh, in the atmosphere. So, very interesting planet uh, in terms of being similar in size to the Earth but much different in its overall characteristics due to the great difference in its atmosphere, the runaway greenhouse effect with a great amount of carbon dioxide uh, preventing liquid water because the temperature is too high and that liquid water is important in removing carbon dioxide from an atmosphere uh, so Venus has lost that capability and then impact craters and volcanoes mapped out with radar uh, another type of volcano on Venus that called pancake volcanoes where the lava that comes out is thicker than uh, in other places and you've seen pancakes on the griddle uh, similar thing here, a thicker type of lava, and these are raised uh, areas above the average terrain level um, as the lava moves out. Some places the lava can be seen to flow, and again the spacecraft give altitude data. So downhill is uh, over to the right here, there's a volcano uh, back to the left on this image, and the lava has uh, kind of eaten its way through a ridge here. This is not currently flowing lava, but old, um, in the past, lava flowed here, cut through this uh, rock barrier, and flowed on out over to the right. So evidence of lava moving on the surface of Venus, um, volcanic action. So with that, there are some internet resources that you ought to look at. Uh, the teachastronomy.com page, uh, solarviews.com, um, and solarsystem.nasa.gov. There's some more good information about Venus that you should uh, read on your own and ask questions later.